Welcome to Skyscope, the podcast for amateur astronomers who uh, want more than just the obvious sights. This is the show where we bring you the latest and, well, most fascinating insights from across the cosmos every Monday right here on this YouTube channel. And today is uh, genuinely special because we're unveiling the first celestial images from a truly groundbreaking new eye on the universe, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory. Indeed. Yeah, for those of you who've been following along, you know the excitement has been building for, well, for this moment. These are the very first images released today, June 23rd, 2025. Hmm. And this telescope, it really promises to revolutionize our understanding of the night sky. This is Skyscope. Challenging targets, real observing. Okay, so what exactly is the Vera C. Rubin Observatory? Why is this first light, as they call it, so significant? At its core, the Rubin Observatory is designed to create the ultimate movie of the night sky. Think of it like a uh, colossal time lapse of the cosmos running for 10 years. Its main survey is called the Legacy Survey of Space and Time, or LSST. And this isn't just any telescope, is it? It's perched way up on Cerro Pachon, a mountain peak in northern Chile, and it's packed with some really innovative tech. Absolutely. This observatory is um, different from anything else out there, largely thanks to a series of, well, incredible engineering feats. These allow it to capture really faint objects over a huge area of the sky and do it incredibly fast. OK, let's unpack this a bit. What makes the Rubin Observatory so unique? Let's get into the specifics. Well, first, there's its optical design. It's actually the first telescope to combine its primary and tertiary mirrors into a single piece of glass. Two mirrors in one. How does that work? Yeah, it's pretty clever. This innovative two-in-one mirror design makes the telescope more compact, you see, and that allows it to move quickly, uh, scoovel around, and be ready for its next observation in record time. And here's where it gets really interesting, I think. It's home to the largest digital camera ever built. Oh, that's right. The LSST camera is just massive, uh, roughly the size of an SUV. Wow. And it weighs around 2,800 kilograms. That's uh, nearly 6,000 pounds. And the sensor itself, an incredible 3,200 megapixel CCD array. 3,200 megapixels. It's hard to even picture that. I know. To give you a sense of scale, like you'd need about 400 Ultra HD TV screens just to display one image from this camera at full resolution. And it's not just big. You mentioned it's fast, too. The whole system. Indeed. Yeah, this is actually the fastest slowing large telescope in the world. It only takes about five seconds to move to its next position and bang, be ready for the next image. Five seconds. Five seconds. You literally couldn't outrun it if it were rotating at top speed. And this speed, combined with its absolutely huge field of view, it captures an area of sky about 10 square degrees. That's roughly the area of 45 full moons packed together. 45 full moons in one go. Exactly. That's how it builds up that movie of the sky so quickly. So with all that speed and... Um that enormous imaging power, it must be generating just an unimaginable amount of data, right? You are absolutely right. Uh, every single night, the Rubin Observatory will produce something like 20 terabytes of data. 20 terabytes a night. Per night. And over its 10-year survey, that adds up to a staggering 60 petabytes of raw image data. 60 Petabytes. Okay, my hard drive just fainted. Yeah, yeah, a monumental amount. So what's really fascinating here, I think, is how that data is going to be made available. It's not just staying locked up, is it? No, and this really touches on an important point about, you know, how we share scientific discovery these days. Rubin Observatory has made a huge commitment to broad data access. Initially, it'll be available immediately to scientists in the U.S. and Chile, the primary partners. Okay, that makes sense. But, and this is key, after just two years, anyone in the world will be able to access the full data set. Anyone like me or any amateur astronomer listening. Yep. Anyone with an Internet connection, essentially, through a web portal. And what's more, Rubin will process new images almost in real time. It'll release public alerts within 60 seconds for anything that's moved or changed brightness significantly. 60 seconds. So like if a supernova goes off, we could know about it almost instantly. Precisely. Or an asteroid streaks by. These alerts go out to the public, allowing other telescopes to quickly follow up. This is really the first time this much astronomical data will be available to so many people uh, globally and so quickly. That real-time alert system sounds like a complete game changer for certain types of astronomy. It absolutely is, yeah. especially for transient events. Okay, so what does all this mean for astronomy then? With this fire hose of data, what are the big mysteries Rubin is setting out to solve? Well, the scientific goals are incredibly ambitious, as you can imagine. Rubin is going to be a powerhouse tool for studying dark energy and dark matter. 
you know, the stuff that makes up most of our universe, but we still barely understand. How will it do that? How do you see dark matter? Well, you don't see it directly, right? But you see its effects. Rubin will measure something called weak gravitational lensing. That's the tiny, tiny distortion of light from distant galaxies as it passes by massive objects, including clumps of dark matter, by mapping these distortions over huge areas. Wow. For dark energy, one key method is observing type Ia supernovae. These explosions have a known brightness, sort of like standard candles across the universe. By measuring how bright they appear versus how far away they are, Rubin can track the expansion history of the universe and how it's accelerating. That acceleration is driven by dark energy. Okay, so cosmology, the big picture stuff, but it also sounds like it will be a game changer for understanding um, our own cosmic neighborhood too, closer to home. Precisely. Yeah, it's expected to massively increase the number of cataloged small objects in our solar system. We're talking near-Earth asteroids, objects out in the Kuiper Belt beyond Neptune. How much of an increase are we expecting? Potentially a 10 to 100-fold increase in discoveries of these small bodies. Oh. It'll make a huge contribution to finding potentially hazardous asteroids, too. And, yes, it will definitely help in the ongoing search for the hypothesized Planet Nine if it's out there. And I heard it's also poised to revolutionize our understanding of things that, you know, go bump in the night. Transient events. That's a key area, absolutely. That cosmic movie approach is perfect for this. Rubin will detect rapidly changing astronomical events, novae, supernovae, variable stars, maybe even things we haven't seen before. And those instant alerts we mentioned, they allow other telescopes, specialized ones, to swing around and get detailed follow-up observations super quickly. Right, catch them in the act. Exactly. Plus, it'll produce an incredibly detailed map of our own Milky Way galaxy, charting billions of stars. But honestly, the sheer volume of data imaging the entire accessible sky every few nights it means we're also anticipating completely new serendipitous discoveries. The unknown unknowns. Exactly. Things we can't even predict right now. That's often where the biggest breakthroughs happen. That is exciting. But with so much data coming in and such a wide view of the sky, are there any unique challenges, I'm thinking? Satellites. We hear a lot about satellite constellations these days. Ah, yes. That's definitely a relevant question. And it's becoming more prominent for all ground-based astronomy the impact of large satellite constellations like Starlink and others. So do they interfere, leave streaks on the images? They do. Yeah, when a satellite passes through the field of view while the camera is exposing, it leaves a bright streak. However, the Rubin team has been studying this very carefully, running simulations, developing strategies to minimize the impact. Like what kind of strategies? Well, they found that slightly altering observing plans maybe tweaking exposure times or avoiding certain parts of the sky at certain times, especially around twilight, can reduce the number of streaks. Does that cost observing time? It might mean a small sacrifice in overall efficiency, maybe um, around 10% by some estimates, but it's crucial to keep it in perspective. Even with large numbers of satellites, projections show that only a very tiny fraction of the total science pixels will actually be lost to streaks less than 0.04%. That sounds yeah, manageable. It is. It's mostly an issue during twilight when the satellites are sunlit against a darker sky. The observatory software is also being designed to identify and mask these streaks automatically. So it's a challenge they're actively addressing. Definitely not something that will stop the science. It's a solvable problem. Good to know. It really sounds like the Vera C. Rubin Observatory represents just a monumental leap forward. Our ability to observe, to understand the universe, it feels like we're entering a new chapter. I think that's fair to say, yeah. These first images are really just the beginning, aren't they? The start of a decade-long journey that promises, well, incredible new insights, and maybe even discoveries that change our fundamental understanding of space and time. It's going to be an amazing decade for astronomy, no doubt about it. And hey, if you enjoyed this episode of Skyscope and you're hungry for more challenging, beautiful, and off-the-beaten-path objects in the night sky, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for listening, and until next time, clear skies and steady seeing. Skyscope. Challenging targets. Real observing. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for weekly podcasts and more.